Howdy, folks. Greyhawk 4 coming at you again, your Resident Vintage Gamer, and it is the campaign update time of the week. And once again, we use the original first edition AD&D rule set for our game. So, where we had left off, if you remember, if not, you can always go back and check the uh, other videos in the series in, on the playlist up to this point to get yourself caught up. But uh, those that remember, we had uh, one of our uh, adventurers had fallen, uh, Sigrid, our barbarian, played by Stesha, um, had, had her character's brains literally sucked out of her head by a mind flayer in the previous session. Um, and where we left off, uh, my character, the cleric, had done everything literally uh, uh, clerically possible to try and get her raised uh, by going to uh, the highest temple in the land with the highest level clerics to try and get, and they couldn't do it, and he couldn't do it, my, my character, Clevite, couldn't do it. Um, so uh, he tried one last thing. He decided, well, maybe if I go to the to another plane, to like the astral plane or something, I can try and raise her there and perhaps it will work. So he tried that. And uh, to the point to where he needed, uh, he prayed to his deity, Alcyrian, uh, for assistance. And uh, all Alcyrian would do would basically give him uh, uh, assistance in getting back, along with Sigurd's body, to the Prime Material Plane, which he did. Now, when that happened, Clevite and Sigurd's body showed up in a town where... We were not anywhere near where we left our other adventurers. They were in another part of the land um, where I had gone astral, and Alcerian puts me back in the town of Tilden, and uh, so now we're separated. The party is split. So I do the most logical thing I could think of would be uh, I I literally am here with this with this uh, dead adventurer. Uh, no way to raise her that I can find, so I've got to do something. So my character takes her outside the city walls uh, and buries her um, until we can figure out if she is basically permanently gone and cannot be raised um, or we are able to research some other matter of you know, getting her uh, raised. But regardless, in the meantime... Uh, can't just be <laughs> hauling her all over the place where we go. So I go out and I bury her. And um, then I decide, well, more than likely, my fellow adventurers, uh, I actually did a wisdom check. And I said, would my character uh, just assume that they would meet at my keep, at Clevite's keep? He has a keep out, you know, uh, uh, probably a, a couple days ride from here. Um and uh, he'll go there, and hopefully they'll meet. They'll think enough to go there and figure that's where he would go and meet up. And sure enough, we meet up at my keep. So then the brainstorming storming session starts, right? Um, so we have Xanadu, uh, uh, played by Niels, and um, uh, we have uh, the Ranger Magic user, who is played by Jonathan, and... Uh, that's all. Stesha didn't make this uh, this session because she was out of town. So it was kind of fitting the fact that her character is indisposed anyway. So she wouldn't have much to do. Um, and so she couldn't make it. So that actually uh, worked out okay. Um, so we, uh, uh, Narmasil, Clevite, Xanadu, the three of us, we have a brainstorming session. And... Um, the options are, do we leave her where she is, or do we bring her here to the Abbey and put her in the basement in one of the, uh, there are holding cells at the Abbey, just in case somebody needed to be you know, restrained or whatever. Um, and bottom line is I decide, yeah, let's bring her here, because if she is in some unnatural state, because she cannot be raised and they don't even want her at the temple anymore. They told me to take her out of there. She's not decaying. So 
Um, if she's going to reanimate at some point, let's have her in a situation where she's confined at least. So we take, we bring her back there, put her, uh, there in, in the basement. And then we decide, okay, uh, let's put that on the back burner for now. Cause we don't have, we're out of ideas at the moment. So we decide what do we think, you know, what else are we going to do? Um, and, uh, I think it was Norma. had some intelligence that there were ships leaving out of a place called Gazir, city called Gazir, that were going on expeditions, uh, exploration expeditions. Um, and uh, a la like Christopher Columbus type things, just going off into the nowhere, hoping to find land type of a thing. So we decide, you know what, let's do that. Let's just go there and let's just get on one of these ships and let's see, you know, what adventure can be found that way. So we do. We go to a city called Gazir, and uh, we find, sure enough, there's an expedition that's going to be leaving uh, in, I think it was three days' time. And uh, we decide, excuse me, we decide, sure enough, that's a, that sounds like a good plan for us. They, they tell us to get our gear, you know, uh, together and be back in time, you know, when the, the ships leave and there's a... I remember there was three ships in the expedition, and um, we head out. This is an expedition into the unknown. We are literally going out west uh, into the open ocean to see what can be found, and hopefully uh, land will be found at some point. The idea, of course, is the captain says, if we don't find something by the time that half of our food is gone, we have to turn around and come back, because that means we have the other half sustain this on the way back so we eventually make it. i think we I, I forget how many days we traveled um but the dm did the the rolls for each day of how much distance was traveled any encounters we had some random encounters here and there with with ocean life there was one giant octopus that attacked one of the ships but it was repelled um and we eventually make it to land and uh we make landfall and the foliage is described to us as very different in that everything is very, very large. Like the leaves are large, the plants are large, the trees are large, everything is huge. Um, and so we decide, uh, Narmaso has a, um, he has a giant owl as an animal, animal companion. And he decides to take that and ride it and try and scout that way. Um... There was a couple of druids that were on the expedition, and they were able to, to uh, turn into to birds or whatever and also do some scouting. Bottom line is they come back, and it turns out the only thing that anybody, that anybody sees is they see some very large creatures, and they describe them um, plated creatures, armor-plated creatures, huge, like, um, you know... Uh, like elephants, but much larger, like rhinoceros, sorry, rhinoceros, but much larger. And then basically they're describing like a triceratops um, or a stegosaurus, basically dinosaurs. We are now in the land of dinosaurs. We, you know, out of character, the three of us are like, oh, we have found the land of the dinosaurs in this campaign. Um, so uh, that's where we ended. Um we uh, are, I'm, I'm convinced that our ranger magic user has kind of a death wish because uh, one of the things he wanted to do there, uh, uh, and Captain stopped him, of course, uh, and we agreed, he wanted to smart, uh, smart, start a smoky fire. And smoky fires is what you start when you want to basically try and attract creatures to fight uh, for combat, just for, for XP and treasure and so forth. And uh, everybody stopped him because it's like, no, we don't know what the fuck is out there. Now we know that there's some type of large creatures that are armored out there. Um, we're not starting any smoky fires. Um, so that was basically it. That was the that was the session. And again, it was only the three of us. Um, so hopefully this Friday we'll have a larger turnout. And uh, I think Stesh is back in town so we can uh, do our thing. And um, we can uh, see what else is out there on these islands. Now, of course, the other issue is 
what are we going to do about Sigrid? Uh, my guess is that the DM is going to have Stesha roll a new character um, in the meantime. And she'll roll a new character to play. Now, whether or not anything happens with Sigrid, she may just be gone forever. And, you know, she'll get entombed or whatever at some point. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. In the meantime, my guess is he'll have her roll another character to play in the meantime. So, anyway, guys, I think that's it for the campaign update. Um, oh, the one thing I did want to show was... So, of course, we did that whole thing, and then I, and I had completely forgotten I had these, these overlays for the table um, of ships. And there's, there's both the front and the back, so you can put them together. You know, you can... You can do that and, and yeah, wait. There you go. You can put them together and uh, use them for your minis and so forth. Of course, you know, half the session we could have been using these when we were on the ship. Of course, I dawn it dawns on me now that I have them. You know, so if we're back on the ship at some point, we'll be able to use these finally. But uh, anyway, guys. Until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side.